안녕하세요. This is Ava from Glow with Ava, and today we are going to be talking about smudge-proof mask makeup. It's been a tough year. We've gone through a lot of masks, but every time I wore a mask, there would be so much makeup that came out to the point where I just relied on no makeup looks at all. But there are certainly days when we really want to dress up and wear makeup without having to have it smudge all under our mask. So these are all the tips and tricks that I experimented with over the last year that really, really worked. So make sure to watch to the very end to get all of the best tips for smudge proof mask makeup so you can still look beautiful under your mask. All right, let's start. I already have all of my skin prep done and I'm gonna do a follow-up video after this to show you guys the best skincare products to use under your mask, especially to make sure that your skin is hydrated all day and to prevent any kind of maskness as well. So with that, um, now that I've done all, everything up to my sunscreen, we're gonna do a little bit of primer and I'm actually using this mini primer from Hourglass. I'm gonna do a little bit of spot conceal, especially kind of like around my nose and then also around here my cheek this is especially where your mask touches i just want to make sure i do have a little bit of primer going on here another great primer for um, more like dry skin is this one from tatcha but i've already showed you guys this one a lot so i'm going to show you guys a new favorite from our class i'm just going to spread it out a little bit now before anything we're going to go in with a powder i know we usually do powders the very last step but i want to make sure to kind of do a loose powder before i begin anything to make sure my makeup actually lasts so i'm only going to use a powder kind of focusing on like the bottom part of my face because that's the part where the mask is going to be touching and today is all look about you know kind of making sure we have smudge proof makeup so your makeup can last all day and actually don't smudge all over on your mask and now we move on to foundation and with foundation um, for it to be more smudge proof it's usually going to be something that is matte um, something that is pore proof and something that is very high coverage so today instead of using an actual foundation i'm going to be using a cushion and this one is something that i've introduced so many times that i got in korea and this has a more um, semi-matte to matte finish while still giving you the natural glow and it is pretty high coverage but you can make it kind of light coverage as well Using a cushion puff can actually be very hard to control the amount that you use that it can actually look cakey. So I'm using a brush like this from Olive Young and then gently patting it over here just to make sure I know exactly how much is going to be going onto my skin and then spreading it out in a very light layer just like that. I like this brush because you can also control it right around your nose area where it's kind of hard to use a puff to make sure you go into the little parts of your nose and angle that. So instead of going very heavy with it, I did very one light layer with the cushion. And for the rest that needs more coverage, I'm using a high coverage concealer. This is a new one that launched from The Ordinary and I'm actually pretty liking it. It is a little bit drying, so my technique is actually misting it so that it doesn't go on too dry, it can actually last longer. I focus around my eye first, like that, and then kind of lift it in upwards motion around my nose a little bit. And with a beauty sponge that is a little bit wet, that's when we're gonna start blending it out, making sure this part, we're moving it in lifted motions right here to kind of give a more lifted appearance. I feel like this technique has really helped me um, kind of give a more lifted appearance. The rest, you just kind of blend it out like that. Really this wet beauty sponge technique is like a lifesaver, especially when you use um, it with a setting spray that helps the concealer last even longer and does not budge all day. That's the base finish and now we're just gonna spot powder the places that we put concealer on and this is the finishing powder from Kosas. It's their new cloud set and I'm using the shade Comfy and at first I didn't know what to expect from this but I really really have been 
loving this finish. It's very, very subtle, but I kind of like the fact that it kind of blurs out your pores. So I love using it on my nose area where I tend to get a little bit more oily. So my pores become a little bit more visible throughout the day, but putting this on top of my nose really helps. And obviously under my eyes, just the parts that where I use concealer, not like an all over coverage. Okay. Brows. This is my favorite brow pencil from Revitalash and I'm just going to spooey it out. And I'm using the warm tone color and because I don't wear that much eye makeup necessarily, I like to give it a strong emphasis to my brows. Not strong, but something that like kind of puts my attention more towards my brows. So doing my brows with a brow pencil and brow gel is like such a must have for me lately. The time that we have left doesn't seem like it's enough. Better late than never. And on top of that, we're using a new brow gel from Carewise. I'm so excited that Carewise actually launched the brow gel finally because I really adore all, all of their products. So we just brush it on top like this. I like the fact that this is just like a very neutral shade. It gives a nice shape to my brows and helps it last much longer. I waited forever. Contour, I use two different kinds of contours, one for my forehead and one for my face area. So for my forehead area, I'm just using the um, Benefit Hoola. Love, love, love the shade. I'm just gonna kind of focus it right around my forehead area because I want to kind of slim down the appearance of my face. So doing like my forehead contour is something that I've been doing for like the last year, but it's made such a big difference. Nothing too heavy because you don't want it to be noticeable, but I like this shade because it does match a little bit more of like my lighter hair color with the highlights. And then for my face contour, I can't really use like a powder contour because that tends to kind of move around my face a little bit more. So cream contour is like the way to go. And I'm loving this new um, contour stick from Westman Atelier. So just go a little bit like this and this. And when I first used this, I was like, oh my God, that is so strong. It's not my skin tone at all. But when you once you blend it out, it becomes such a beautiful shade. Let me show you guys. You can even blend it with your fingers as well, but look at how it blends out. So gorgeous. I feel like I don't, I can't even tell if I did like a big contour. So that's it for the contour. And I actually don't really use highlighter as much because highlighter kind of comes right when your mask touches. So I really don't feel like there is much need for a highlighter. It only adds to more areas of the mask and smudge on. So we're gonna skip on the highlighter. And let's go in with our eyes first now. So eye primer is something that I love using on days when I want to make sure my eye makeup kind of lasts a little bit longer. I mean, as I said earlier, I really don't wear that much eye makeup, but that is the one thing that people see more. So whatever eye makeup that I use, I just want to make sure at least that can last and does not smudge. And as my base, this is like my favorite base. I feel like everyone has this. It's Omega from MAC. And I'm just gonna tap a little bit as a base color. This is the absolute, you know, go-to base color. And a lot of the days, this is all I wear because that's the only kind of like shading that I want in my eye area. I feel like I'm not good at eye makeup and I feel like I don't really look good with a ton of eyeshadows. So I usually stick to like one to two colors just to give a little bit of shading and definition. Okay, that's it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of shimmer on my eyes just because I wanna give more attention. And with this one, I just like using my hands to blend it out. It's got such a beautiful, like bouncy kind of texture. And just apply a little bit on my lids. You can go in with a lot of it. It's still gonna be beautiful, but it's very nice because I like using this for like an everyday look almost, but you can also make it glam if you want. I use a little bit of eyeliner. This one is from M Cosmetics. I love how skinny the liner is, so it gives you a lot more control. And I like using it just under my eye right here. Better late than never. I see us spending days together. Sketching pictures up and singing songs. I didn't put any on my eyelid, but just like under my eye, and even just that gives a lot more definition. 
And lastly, we are using some mascara. So I've been using some lash serum diligently lately, so my lashes have definitely grown a lot to the point where, you know, I just can use the standard mascara and it, like the lengthening effect is even more amplified. But anyways, this one from Ilia is one of my favorite mascaras to kind of give you that full length, but also kind of volumize at the same time. So I feel like this one is a great option for Asian lashes. This is what it looks like. I know I can call you. You always have answers to problems. The difference between the two eyes, this is amazing. Almost looks like I have some fake lashes on, but it's just the power of the mascara and lash serum. All right, so now we really don't have that many slips left. It's just a lipstick and some blush. And with lipstick, I talked about this before, but these YSL lipsticks are amazing for long lasting and smudge proof, especially for masks. And I think they launched it um, last year in the middle of COVID to make sure this was like, you know, very smudge proof. So I have two shades. I think I'm gonna use this orangey shade a little bit more because it kind of matches like my greener outfit. It's such a beautiful shade. I love this one. And then over that, we're gonna use a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Liner. Pillow Talk Lip Liner is going to be an absolute must have for years to come because of the neutral shade. And it just like gives you more definition without it looking too obvious. As I said, for my blush, I've actually been not really using powder blushes as much, especially on days when I do wear a mask because it once again tends to move around. So what I like is, you know, the fact that lipsticks are very long lasting and smudge from lips. So it was like, it must be the same for, you know, my cheeks as well. So I've been using the same shade for my blushes. So if I'm going for a more of a pink tone, then I use the same pink tone for my lips and blush. But since we use more of the orangey coral tone on my lips, I'm gonna do the same for my cheek area. And this one, like it seems like it's gonna be high coverage, but it really isn't. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, kind of like a triangle area. So it goes down a little bit, but also above. Same for the other side. All right, so this is the shape that we have before applying and blending this out. Now let's just blend this out with a brush like this. You can blend it out with your fingers if you want more of like that higher coverage, but I always like using a brush to kind of blend it out. Better late than never. such a pretty nice flush nothing too overpowering so that when you wear your mask that part is still kind of showing but there's a little bit more underneath that won't necessarily smudge off too okay in the last step of course we're going to finish everything off with a powder so it's like a sandwich because we started with a powder and we're going to end with a powder too so once again using the same by terry powder this is one of my favorites because i just like absolutely love the ingredients in this it's hydrating it doesn't like crack up and dry out my skin so kind of using a very loose powder of this all over and i like this because it still kind of helps you maintain a little bit more natural dew but because of the foundation that we use and everything, we do have more of a matte finish today, which is exactly what we were going for. Now, after that, we're gonna kind of try this mask on. Okay, I'm gonna tap it, tap, 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 wear it around. And then let's see. There's nothing. There's not even a little bit, even on the edges right here that I first wore it, there's no makeup on. Oh, you know what? What I forgot is for your lips, you actually have to use tissue like this to make sure. Do it until not much product comes out. You can even use like powder over it and that's gonna help it last much, much longer. All right, so that was it for my mask and makeup. I hope you guys found these tips helpful. These are all the tips that I kind of experimented and learned over the last year, especially with COVID and wanting to wear a mask around everywhere, but without having my makeup kind of spill and smudge everywhere. So for the next year, let's keep wearing a mask and be safe, but also make sure we can still create that beautiful look underneath it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching my video today. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, then make sure to subscribe to my channel here below and also follow me on TikTok and Instagram at glow with Ava.